The turnout for the funeral service atop a high hill, just outside of town, was sparse. The only attendees were Reverend Melton, Jeb the Undertaker, a handful of drunken men, and three boys. The boys listened stoically as the man of God struggled to find decent things to say about the deceased. Eventually, he stopped trying when he noticed the second oldest boy sneering at him. He glared at the lad and quickly finished his brief speech before letting the other men speak. They bemoaned the death of their drinking partner, blathering on about how much liquor he'd been able to consume in one sitting. When they finally walked away, they patted the shoulder of each boy, slurring their condolences. Still, the young trio remained silent. Standing next to the grave, the boys watched dirt slowly fill the hole and cover the casket. It had been a depressing affair. Nothing like the glorious service held a week earlier in the cemetery where the entire town came to pay their respects as the angelic voices of the church choir filled the sky. On that day, the townspeople wailed and cried, feeling the tragic loss of one of their own. The many dishes of food brought to the Sullivan doorstep would feed the boys for at least two months. Yes, this turnout was different, but it was one the boys wouldn't have missed for the world. Reverend Melton stopped next to the group. He studied each of their identical stone-faced expressions, searching for a sign of compassion. None would be forthcoming. Like their parents, the boys were incredibly good-looking. Jackson was the eldest, and resembled his dear mother the most, down to his calm personality. Standing tall at five feet ten inches, he sported short black hair and a solemn pair of hazel eyes. Already he appeared wise beyond his thirteen years as he assumed the now-available role of the family patriarch. Eleven-year-old Darby was the second eldest, and unfortunately resembled their bastard of a father. A strapping lad, he had thick reddish-brown hair that fell to his shoulders in thick sheets with a pair of dark, stormy green eyes. Many a blistering lecture had been given to him because of his constant mischief, but he shrugged it all off with the Sullivan devil-may-care attitude and a shit-eating grin. And then there was Casey the baby of the family, at eight years old. He inherited his dark blonde hair from his paternal great-grandfather, and it was cut in a bowl shape that framed his delicate face. Being small in stature due to a fever at birth had earned him the unpleasant title of Little Shit from their father. His bright hazel eyes filled with tears as he, too, stared at the gravesite. Clearing his throat, the reverend began somberly, Boys, I'm sorry for your loss. It's bad enough to lose your mother, but to also lose your father. We didn't lose our mother. She was taken from us, Reverend, Darby interjected scathingly. Casey clutched his thigh, sniffing quietly, and Darby ruffled his hair reassuringly. Reverend Melton shot the redhead a censorious frown as he bent down to console Casey. The lad twisted away from them and launched himself at his eldest brother. Jack picked him up with an easy familiarity and rubbed his back, comforting Casey as sobs shook his tiny body. Helpless, the man of God could only watch as the inconsolable little boy cried harder. 